Hello everybody, my name is Richard Vigorelli and this is Vigorelli Institute. Haven't uploaded a real video, especially philosophical one, in a long time. So, um, this one might get me into some trouble. We're going to do it anyway. Okay? Alright. So, I got pulled up on my handy dandy little phone here, a list of things. But before I get to that, I want to give you a little bit of background here, okay? So, back when I was a kid, uh, when the world was young and the ancient gods were petty and cruel in the before time, the long, long ago, um, there was a movement that went through the UK, the US, um, much of the Western world, really. Uh, especially things that are technically the Anglosphere, meaning English-speaking countries, okay? Or at least countries that had a bit of English speakers in them, okay? And that thing was, I guess you could call it a cultural revolution, okay? This happened arguably in the 70s, but it was really French back then, okay? And I bet you think you know what I'm going to say. You're wrong, okay? It was a shift in spirituality, okay? Started in the 70s and it really gained, gained steam sometime in the 90s, okay? It was a concept called the Divine Feminine, okay? The reason for this is in the Abrahamic religions, uh, most notably Christianity, um, God is man. God is masculine. God doesn't have any feminine traits. Okay? Why would God need feminine traits? That's ridiculous. Yeah, you haven't studied religion. Okay, moving on. So, it came through, and a lot of people, um, a lot of them were Christians, few Jews, they decided that the general interpretation of God was wrong because it completely excluded women altogether. After all, if we are made in the image of God, why do we have women? Okay, shouldn't there only be one gender in the species? Well, moving on. Okay, what there? Anyway, so they decided that they were going to completely split off and start a brand new movement, okay, called the Divine Feminine, in where the practitioners would reclaim their goddess. A little bit of narcissism there, you ask me, but, well, we'll get to that. Okay, there were meetings for this. Lots of TV shows either said, yay, this is cool, or made fun of it. South Park made fun of it. Um, yeah, it's a hilarious episode that the boys did. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what happened was a bunch of uh, New Age religions sprouted out of this movement. Uh, one of them was started by a psychic lady. Her name was Sylvia Brown. Okay. Um, she did a lot of guest spots on Montel Williams. Um, she allegedly helped people find lost loved ones, items. Like, she would come in, sit down, and read the room. And people would pop up and say, Hi, I lost my wedding ring. Where is it? Oh, um, it fell in the trap in your sink. Uh, just just uh, get a little thing, you know, find it. Stop taking your ring off and leaving it by the sink, you moron. They'd say, hi, um, I've like got this horrific disease, and am I going to get better? Absolutely, you're going to get better, but here's what you got to do. Okay, and apparently it worked, I guess. I used to watch it um, back when I was a teenager and when I was in college. Um, I watched it with my mom, okay? Because to be fair, my dad was busy working, okay? Kind of a lot, so he wasn't around, okay? A lot of my moral education came from my mother, okay? So, 
Now, uh, Miss Sylvia, what she did was she started a new church called Novus Spiritus. It's bad Latin for new spirit. Anybody who speaks Latin out there, please elaborate as to why it's bad Latin. I speak some bad Spanish and some bad Italian. I could probably educate you, but not exactly the point of this video. Okay? So... She started this religion and um, started selling a bunch of books and all this and started sending a bunch of people. And I bought quite a few of those books, read them too. And I noticed some things in them. So being the scholar that I am, um, I started double-checking her work. And a lot of it, she was the only source. Now, speaking academically, okay, speaking scholarly, if... You only have one source for information, and it cannot be repeated, because anything that is completely true and correct and all of that can be independently verified. Okay, Somebody else would have had to come across this at some point, otherwise where are you getting your stuff? If nobody else has, you made it up. You're probably not the first one at this point. Has to be something out there. Okay, And if there isn't, maybe invite people to take a look at it and say, hey, I found this thing, it's kind of weird, double check me, I might be crazy. Okay? Well, she came out with this thing, it was a goddess called Asna. Okay? And her masculine counterpart was Om, as in Om. Okay? Did this whole book on what the spirit world is like and what good and evil is, bunch of stuff, past lives, what's going to go on in the future. Yeah. Well, I was young and dumb and bought into it. Okay. Back then, I, I was pretty hardcore Christian um, in that I was Mormon. Okay. Not anymore. And I got to say, I jumped in on that and my life did not go very well. A lot of my problems that I've got right now are directly the result of what I did in my early 20s with this, even into my mid-20s, okay? A lot of the poverty that I went through and all of that because, well, I was grabbing onto something that was not there, okay? So what happened... Hey, sweetheart. Hey, Miss Mari. Hello. She just had a drink. She was helping me uh, play my game earlier. Yeah, I actually, um, I'm actually recording this about 20 minutes after my um, uh, Hogwarts run that I just did Sunday. Anyway, moving on. So I bought all of this stuff and I read her things and double checked everything and well, started to notice a lot of inconsistencies. Started to notice stuff that if it was real, she should have put it in the earlier book. She didn't. She said, I don't know what it is. And then like two books later, oh, it's a thing. I'm like, wait, what? You should know this by now. Okay. Well, kind of fell out with that. Um, threw all of her books in the garbage. Later she met her end, by the way. Um, she prophesied her own death, okay? She was five years off, and then the COD was wrong. You would think good psychic who's allowed to see their own end would know better. So that's a problem. Also, her um, thing that she did on the future, uh, she wrote that 04, okay? I actually had it. It was called Book of Prophecies, and... I kept it up until 2016, when the prophecy started, okay? Um, she said that the current president at the time of writing the book, which would have been um, Barack Obama, would be the last president of the United States. And that afterwards we were going to be done with it. We were, getting, we were going to completely get rid of the executive branch, or at least modify it, and we would then be governed in the executive branch 
by a, what are you into, young lady? We would then be governed by a triumvirate. Yeah, somebody doesn't understand constitutional law. Also, um, we were going to be at war with North Korea. Didn't happen. And, you know, you would think that somebody with the swagger of, you know, Trump, like him or not, would have shown up. Didn't. So, yeah, he was elected in 16. She said there would be no president in 2016. It would actually be something kind of like a Speaker of the House type of thing. There'd be three of them. It was a mess. She also said starting in 2016, there would be these things called healing centers in every single city. And they would um, be like pyramids and have things like schools and all this, and they'd be staffed by volunteers. Because nothing says, I'm wasting my life like 40 hours a week where you're not getting paid. Yeah. Also, um, there would be a lot of, like, meteors hitting the Earth, and we would be living in domed cities, but they'd only be for the rich people. And those domes would be immune to meteor impacts. Okay. I don't think somebody understands physics. Anyway. So, with this whole goddess thing, I, of course, bought into it because I was young and stupid. Okay. And I had been raised by the American education system, who basically didn't teach me anything, and I was left to fend for myself. Okay? Like a lot of people. Now, you also bring in, um, at this time, a guy named Dan Brown. Okay? He wrote a couple of books, um, more than two, actually, but the two that stick out are Angels and Demons and The Da Vinci Code. He was really into... Um, alternative religion, alternative versions of Christianity, big into Gnosticism, stuff like that, okay? Well, I ate this stuff up because, again, I'm an idiot, okay? And I'm reading Angels and Demons like it's a documentary. Yeah, moving, okay? So, I embrace this whole goddess culture thing, okay? Now, to be fair, not exactly bad, but I was heavily unbalanced, okay? I was doing things that were feminine, okay? I was passive. I was receptive. I was... I was not assertive. Whatever my employer said, that was law. And never ever ask for anything. Oh, no, 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 no. You must never do this. Um, you must only do um, what they tell you to do. Okay? Never ever do anything else. Never ask a question. Everything is accepting. Okay? It's very feminine. Okay? Well... I lost complete touch with my masculine side. Gee, why was I single? Okay. And conversely, it made me highly aggressive. Okay, made me kind of mean, too. Made me very self-abusive, made me very caustic towards other people. And I was chronically unemployed, broke, literally couldn't get a date to save my life. Sound familiar? Yeah, this is not brand new, kids. Okay? Now that clomp, clomp, clomp sound you're hearing is my cats. They're playing, because of course they are. So, long about 2012, 2013, I started studying the divine masculine. Now I got pulled up on my phone here. Handy dandy little chart. Okay. It is, uh, divine, it is masculine traits and feminine traits. Okay? I'm going to concentrate on the masculine side. All right? So, good things are authoritative. What? Certainty. Being debonair. What does debonair mean? It's kind of like being tactful. But, you know, instead of walking in, scratching your gut, and belching, you...
quick thing than, mm, excuse me, okay? Person is self-assured. They're courageous, meaning they will, are willing to jump into harm's way to help someone, okay? They are goal-oriented, meaning I want that degree. How am I going to get it? I need to set up little goals that I can actually do, okay? They're protective. They take care of the people around them, okay? Um, they're physical. They don't sit behind the keyboard and yell at people. You know who you are. Okay? Doesn't mean they get into fights. It's that if something needs done, they roll up their sleeves and go do it. Okay? They understand things in a very plain way. On this, it says black slash white. Okay. Things are good or bad. If there's gray area, excuse me, they reason their way through those gray areas. Okay. And are capable of understanding things once they put thought to it. Okay. That means they are logical. Okay. Um... Masculine is not ruled by emotion, okay? They're ruled by logic, possibly even instinct, okay? Uh, they're also easygoing. So they're not going to, you know, you look at them cross-eyed, they're not going to go, what do you want? Okay? You know, see the anger flare in their eyes. Yeah, that's not good, okay? You look at them cross-eyed, you say, hey, need some help? What can I do for you? Okay? You're assertive without being a jerk, okay? You're also ambitious. What? Ambition is bad! No, it isn't. Ambition is very good. Do you want to know why I have this? Do you want to know why I'm using this phone? Do you want to know why there's a computer behind me? Because I work for them. I had ambition to get them, okay? Also, so that this thing even exists, somebody had an ambition to make a better means of communication and gathering of information rather than, you know, schlepping all the way to the library. Also, somebody had the ambition to create, a, to create a place where knowledge could be stored centrally so that everyone could get at it. But the guy at church said that ambition is bad. Okay, well, he had an ambition to become a preacher, didn't he? So shut up. Okay? Guys are also funny. There's nothing more attractive than a guy who can make you laugh, man. Okay? Ladies, also dudes that like dudes, back me up on this, please. Okay? Do you want to hang out with somebody who you walk up and say, hey, how you doing? Doing. Doing. Please clarify. How are you feeling today? Feeling. Feeling. Please clarify. Do you have emotions? Yes. I, however, do not have access to them at this time. How quickly do you want to do things? Okay. Now, men are also active. Okay. Masculine aspect is out doing things. It's running around. Okay. It is bright, it is cheerful, it is warm, it is um, fun, okay? Um, all of this, by the way, is found in the yin-yang principles, okay? Chinese medicine, my son. Look what I do, okay? Uh, men are also action-oriented. So, a real man... Okay, something needs done, he gets off his butt, turns off the TV, goes outside, and does it. And I'll get to it later. And I'll have something else to do it. No, he does it. Okay, assuming he's capable and has the know-how. Now, bad masculinity, while we're here on this subject, is he doesn't know how to do it, but he does it anyway, 
and then screws it up. This would be, say, your dad, who has never worked on a car a day in his life, doesn't even know how to hold a wrench, yet he's going to go change the oil and the spark plugs, rotate the tires, and rebuild the motor, even though no frickin' clue what he's doing. No, 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 no. Okay, proper masculinity, what he's going to do is he's first going to learn how to do that. He's also going to refer to, he's also going to defer to someone who knows better than him, as in be humble enough to understand that, learn from it, and then implement. Okay? Last one, he's capable of spatial reasoning. Meaning, you can take an item, this is something that I made, it's an appointment for joints, okay? Ambition, by the way, and know-how. Um, okay, this is, oh, a little bit less than my hand breadth. My hand breadth is, give or take, I don't know, eight inches? I got small hands. Okay. What? I can't help the way I was made. Okay. He knows that if he has to put this somewhere, that should kind of sort of fit. Okay. But... We'll put it in to see if that can happen, okay? He'll be able to look at this phone and say, all right, that's a few inches wide, okay, kind of, sort of. All right, that should fit in this pocket. Oops, it didn't. I need a better, I need a bigger pocket, and he goes and fixes it, okay? Now, let's look at the negative traits, things that say that's toxic. All right, man who's aggressive meaning in your face, yelling at you, swearing at you, calling you an istophobe. Yeah, that's toxic, pally boy. Okay? Boastful. I'm awesomest ever. Okay? A man who is good is going to be humble. Okay? He knows what he can and cannot do. Okay? He doesn't overplay his abilities, okay? For instance, I can't bake to save my life, okay? If you come to me and say, Richard, I need a birthday cake today. I say, well, um, Publix has got them, okay? Maybe try Smith's, Kroger, um, Walmart, for instance. I can't help you. I can pick it up for you. I'd be happy to. I'm, you're going to have to pay for it, okay? Okay. Um, also, something that I didn't grab in here, man is a provider, okay? The man, uh, real masculine trait, goes out, gets the thing, brings it back, makes it usable, okay? Now, it does say here, negative traits, he's dominant. Okay, let's look at this. Okay. There is a difference between dominant and authoritative. A lot of people flip them. Okay. What they mean in this case, a uh, person being dominant, is I am the best, you will bow before me. And if you step out of line, you'll have a bad day. Yeah, that's not good. Okay. That's how things like wars happen. Okay. Now, authoritative versus authoritarian totally different, okay? Dad is dad, son is son, wife is wife, okay? You have your roles, okay? You have the authority within those roles, but there must be some kind of hierarchy, okay? We've had systems in the past where literally there was no difference between any one given person. Those fall apart quickly, okay? Our hierarch hierarchies are actually in our psychological makeup as primates, okay? These things go all the way back probably at about the same time we got spines for the first weekend, okay? Um, that's when we were fish, okay? <sighs> Evolution! Go ahead, yell at me in the comments, please. Okay? Now, moving on, shall we? Vain, okay? This is up there with boastful, 
Okay, a man who is vain is, well, oh, it just doesn't look right, does it? Okay, oh, my hair is just uh, it's slightly out of place. Okay, he's always, you know, oh, looking at himself and touching himself up. I actually had a friend like this when I was in school. His name was Scott. Okay, well, we were 16, and because Scott was kind of a... He didn't drive. Okay, well, we had scored a double date with these two girls, okay, so I was driving. So I said, all right, date's at four. I will be there to pick you up at two, because Scott was always late, so I was going like, all right, 2.30, we should be fine, okay. So I show up at his house, two o'clock. He's not ready, so I'm like, that's okay. I planned on this, all right. So 2.30 rolls around, and he's still futzing with his hair, okay. There's just one strand that he just won't get in won't get in the way, and I'm, I'm about to ring him, all right? So I walk up to him, and I say, dude, you got five minutes, and we're leaving, okay? Get it done, or I'm going to lick the side of your face. He said, all right, all right, all right, I'll get it done. So five minutes later, he's still picking at it. I walked up to him, grabbed him by the, grabbed him by the head, and went, ah, like that, right up his cheek. He was like, it's like, you look fine, come on, okay? By the way, the date went horribly. So, now, yeah, I may have been a little bit not best, but better than that. Okay, all right. Um, not a good man is brazen, egotistical, okay? Basically the same thing. And, yeah, I'm guilty of that, okay? I have also jumped into things where I really shouldn't have. I jumped in without thinking, okay? I'm only human-ish. Okay, and a real man considers things, okay? He doesn't let himself get controlled by his emotions. A person who's egotistical, who is combative, who is defiant, okay, is ruled by his emotion, okay? Specifically that of anger, specifically that of fear, okay? He's very anxious. A real man is self-assured, okay? Now, being combative, okay, it's one of the things in here, is different from standing up for, for yourself, okay? A real man stands up for himself and stands up for his friends, stands up for his family, stands up for his people. He doesn't, you know, oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, a real man doesn't do that. He said, no. Knock it off. I don't like that. Okay? Now, properly, you should not push yourself into a fight. Okay? That being said, most of the proper men that I know are very dangerous people. But it is controlled. Okay? The best men that I have ever met um, only get into fights when it is absolutely necessary, okay? You know, a little bit of a boom, okay? A little bit of chest thump right there, that's fine, okay? If somebody's getting aggressive, getting combative with them, they meet them, okay? They don't escalate it, they meet, okay? Basically, are you sure you want to do this? You just wait for them. They wise up. Back down. Cool. Don't worry about it. We don't harp on it. We go back to whatever it was we were doing. We call it easy. We keep an eye. Okay? That's proper. A combative individual, which is what many people think all men are, um, will harp on it. Okay? As the person's retreating, they'll advance. Okay? And just push, 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 push until the other person is now on the, is now on the defense and they lash out and you get a fight going, okay? It sounds familiar, doesn't it? Trolls. Okay. Oh, being defiant is bad. All right, let's talk about this. Okay. So, a defiant person goes against authority, okay? So, if being defiant 
is bad, then being compliant is good, which, by the way, is part of pacificity, which is also a negative trait. Okay? So what they're sneaking in here is bad things. Okay? So you can't be authoritative and defiant at, and not defiant at the same time. Okay? Well, yes, you should know your place. Okay? You should also be smart enough to know when you are being controlled. Okay? So I am going to break with that a little bit. A defiant person is not controlled. Okay? So a negative trait coming in from the outside okay, is I'm going to control you and you're going to like it. No, I'm not. Okay? A real proper bit of masculinity okay, says, I am my own man. I will take care of things. There's nothing you can do. Okay? I will do this. Okay. So, adding in. Come back here. You. Oh, come on. Print thing won't work. There it goes. Okay. Argumentative. Is that what you're doing, Richard? No. I'm explaining. Okay. An argumentative person pulls things up that are irrelevant to the disagreement. Okay? You can be disagree. You can disagree on things. You should not agree on everything. Okay? I have friends, we do not agree on stuff. Okay? Now, a negative trait is, well, I think it should be done this way. Well, I disagree. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay? That's a negative trait. Okay? And argumentative is, I think it should be done this way. Well, I think it should be done this way. You! Okay? That's also a negative trait. It's the other end of the spectrum. Okay? Now, a rational man will say, okay, I think it should be done this way. Well, I think it should be done this way. Okay? Reasoning behind it. He might have something cool. Okay? So, you both plead your case. All right? If you cannot come to a consensus, one of two things needs to happen. One of you needs to win that argument, and then you move on, or you cut the tie and then leave it and then leave the bad thing alone. Most people can't do that. I'm probably one of them. Okay. Also, someone who is compulsive. Okay. I'm playing video games all day, every single day whether you need to or not, is compulsive behavior. Excessive drinking is a compulsive behavior. Okay? Watching prawn is a compulsive behavior. Okay? They are talking about addiction. Anything that pulls you away from your life, pulls you away from your family, pulls you away from your people, pulls you away from work, Okay? and causes you to spend money needlessly, causes you to go without so that the thing you can do, you can do, so, so that this thing that you're doing, you can do, that's an addiction. Okay? It's compulsive behavior. Okay? That's a negative trait. Okay? And it's on the masculine side. Okay? All right. So let's look at the feminine side, shall we? So, um, interesting how they phrased all of that. Um, feminine things. Now, these are the negative aspects of femininity. Okay? Timidity. Okay? Flakiness. Being out of touch. Okay? Uh, being insecure. Okay? Gossiping. Yeah. Hey, you want to know what Bill did? Holy crap, bro. Okay? Being hysterical, that is the exact same thing as being, oh, well, highly emotional, really, okay? Uh, being passive, being timid, largely the same thing, just allowing things to happen, okay? Um, also, 
Acting without thinking and thinking without acting are basically the exact same thing. They're just two sides of the same coin. If you spend all day, you know, just thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking it's like, get off the pot, okay? Whereas person jumps in and does the thing without thinking about what could happen, like I did in one of my things. Yeah, jumped into a fight, almost died. Yeah, it could have been bad. <laughs> okay. Now, um, a good masculine trait is being logical, but being overly logical, such as having no emotion whatsoever, and processing, 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 you know, spinning things, spinning things, spinning things. Yeah, it doesn't help you either, booby. Okay? All right, being nosy, being obsessive. That's compulsive behavior, by the way. Um, being indecisive, like I said, okay, and complaining about every little thing. It's like, oh my god, shut up. We get it. You don't like it, okay? Give it a rest. Get a hobby, okay? See what I'm saying? Now, you incorporate divinity into this, okay? Now, this is where we start getting into spirituality. We start getting into religion, okay? And by the way, one of the streamers that I follow, her name is Brittany Venti. Uh, she's actually spoken a great deal on this. Love Brittany. I also think she's gorgeous. Good on you, Sean. All right. Um, she likes to talk a lot on men. One of the things she said is men are not allowed to be spiritual. That's a girl thing. Guys, you can have religion, okay? So... If you don't want to be a Christian, that's cool. This is me talking. If you don't want to be a Christian, that's cool. Get a new one. Okay? Dozens of religions out there. Pick one. Okay? If you're running around with crystals, doing the astrology thing and crap like that, but Richard, you do astrology? Yeah, because I enjoy it. I don't base my life on it. Okay? It's a passing fancy. All right, I understand it. That way, you know, if I if something ain't looking right, maybe I can get something of an answer here. And it's like, oh, okay, fine, whatever. Okay, and then I route around and I do things. Okay, which, by the way, in China, Japan, Korea, India, Persia, you call it Iran, um, hmm. Greece, Rome, what used to be called Judea. All, uh, all astrologers were male. Then start becoming almost exclusively female until the gypsy culture moved in. So there. Okay. See, what a lot of people don't understand is spirituality has a basis, okay? Spirituality is... Religion is dogma, okay? These are the rules that you agree to abide by when you are practicing this religion. If you are a Jew, for instance, part of the religion is you do not eat pork, okay? Same thing if you're a Muslim, okay? If you're a Christian, you're not necessarily held to that, okay? Because it's not part of the religion, okay? However, let's say you go spiritual, okay, well, then you adopt other things based on new criteria that you yourself are deciding upon because you're going for a little bit more of a rigorous life, okay? So... If I were to come across someone who is very who is a Christian and they wanted to be a little bit more spiritual, it actually wouldn't surprise me if they decided to not eat pork. Okay? Because it's not that the pork is going to hurt them. It's that they are instead of eating the pork, which is a verifiably unclean food, especially here in the States, um, they are adding more discipline to their life, which, by the way, is a masculine trait, and becoming more, um, more enlightened as a result. Discipline breeds enlightenment. Okay? 
That's why if you go to a Buddhist temple and say, hey, I'd like to learn how to be enlightened, they'll say, okay, scrub the floor. They're doing it for two reasons. One, uh, discipline. It makes you work, okay? It's also menial, so you get to think about things, okay? Two, um, if you're really serious about it, you'll stick with it, okay? If you're not serious about it, you'll go, okay? By the way, same thing happens if you ever want to become a Jew. You have to ask them seven times, and they have to turn you away seven times. You show up on the eighth, you're like, yeah, okay, come on in. You proved yourself, okay? That's very interesting, don't you think? Okay, then. So, when it comes to the divine masculine, okay, it's taking all of those good beneficial traits of being male, okay, being masculine, and applying them in regards to your religion, to your spiritual discipline. But Richard, you said men can't be spiritual. You're not paying attention. Okay. It is applying those within the framework of whatever it is you call God. Okay? Whatever that may be. Okay? I have my system, and I apply those accordingly. Okay? There are certain parts of masculinity that I accentuate based on my personality and psych profile and based on my religion. One of these is protection. It's something I've always enjoyed doing. I'm not afraid of a scrap. And if I see somebody about to get beat, I jump in and I and I try to stop it. It's actually how I got, I don't know if you can see my scar, it's actually how I got that. I broke up a fight. Okay. Somebody punched me in the ear. Who punches in the ear? Anyway. Ironically, that person was not masculine at all. <laughs> all right. Another one that I do is I, is I learn things, okay? I'm not passive. I go out after stuff, okay? I have ambition. This was an ambition for me. I created this, okay? Uh, my books were an ambition. I wrote those, okay? See these pictures behind me, okay? I had the ambition to have those done, so I found me an artist. And I'm so glad I found her. I was kind of losing hope, <laughs> okay? I found, I found her. I gave her a hug. I was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I can't do this, okay? I am terrible at drawing, okay? I'm a decent painter, but I'm not great, okay? Good writer, and, you know, I can talk, okay? I like to hear myself talk, but anyhow, okay? A lot of people say that humility also, while we're on the subject of that, because I just demonstrated some humility, is being staring at the ground, okay? It is not acknowledging what you're good at. It is um, attacking yourself if you make a mistake. No, that's pride. Okay? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. What I like to call the yin of pride, it's passive pride. Okay? Because if you actually confront the person, they become highly aggressive. Okay? And combative. Ah. Okay? So, what they, a humble person, like I said, I am not good at drawing things. I can't make to save my life. You want your car worked on? Take it to the service station. Don't ask me. I don't like getting dirty. Or covered in oil. Or laying on my back on the cold, cold ground. Okay? I have more important things to do. Okay? So I am humble enough to ask for help in things that I am not good at doing, or I just really don't want to do, and I'm willing to surrender the money to do so. Even though I technically could do it. Somebody else is, because that is their job, they're probably going to be better at it than I am. Okay? However, I also know what I'm good at. Okay? I am an amazing acupuncturist. Okay? Ask any one of my patients. 
Yeah, I've had a few that I couldn't help, and I was also humble enough to say, look, I don't think I can help you, okay? I'm sorry. You are either beyond my skill, or this condition cannot be changed. I am sorry, okay? I did my best with it, but I knew when to stop, okay? I didn't yank them along and blow a bunch of smoke and try to convince them to stick around, all because I wanted their money. I actually routinely tell patients that, look, if you don't need me, don't come in. Save your money, okay? Save your time, okay? It also frees me up to help somebody else. Hi, sweetheart. That's my Sophia. Come here. Wanna say hi? Come here. Come here, baby girl. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Okay. This is Sophie. Say hi. Yeah. <laughs> She's my sweetheart. Okay. Um. Where was I? Ah, oh, yes. Okay. Humility. Okay. I am also very active with my patients. Okay. Um, I sit down, I listen, I offer guidance as needed, and then I take the action of actually treating them. I apply the knowledge that I gained through my ambition, and I help them out. Now, let's say that patient is scared. They're in pain. And they're a little bit, uh, a little bit short with me. Oh, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. You're sick. It's all right. I've got you. Okay? Lay down. Okay? Ow! Shh! Stop! I understand. Pull the needle out. We're done. I didn't get angry with them. I didn't hit them. I didn't yell at them. I didn't say, shut your mouth! Okay? None of that. Okay? That's what a man does. Okay? A not-man, uh, who would have been me a few years ago, would say, rah, 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 rah. How dare you, man? My mommy, man. Okay. All right. Now, the divine feminine stuff. Hi, Mari. How you doing, sweetheart? Yes, I know. I know. You're getting hungry. Okay. It came in to get me. They, uh, see, one of the things that I really stress, especially when I've, I've got a patient or a person, okay, or a viewer that comes to me and we start talking spirituality and religion and stuff like that, because yes, I have studied all of them. Um, I say, well, how do I rectify masculine and feminine? I say, well, you're going to have to pick one, okay, to lean on, okay? And you can pick traits on either side, okay? Now, I work in medicine. Okay? I work in healing. I fix people. Okay? That, yes, is a masculine job historically, but it's also a very feminine job historically. It's nurturing. Okay? Nurturement, uh, the, nurturing is a feminine trait. Okay? And... Given that after I put the needles in, I let the patient sit there for 20, 30 minutes, that's quite passive because I did my job, now we wait, okay? Whereas, um, if I was being, you know, quote-unquote masculine, I'd be, oh, doing this, doing this, you know, just basically harassing the person's body and making it heal. Or I could be humble and actually, stop that, and actually, you know, let the things do what they do. Let the patient's body do its job. Okay? See, proper masculinity and proper femininity is not anxious. It's calm. Okay? Now, you can be active and calm. You can be passive and calm. You can be passive and anxious. You can be active and anxious. Okay? But I'm starting to ramble here, okay? I think you guys get the point, all right? Now, if you're not exactly satisfied with the way your spirituality is going, the way your religion is going, 
Maybe look around for something new. Okay? Stay in the light. Okay? You know who you are. Okay? I don't care if you're a Christian. I don't care if you're a Jew, Muslim, Buddhist, pagan, whatever. Okay? Be good. Okay? Don't dive into that chaotic dark side stuff. Okay? We got enough of that going around. We, we need more light-sided people. Okay? By the way, if you want some really cool uh, feminine stuff, check out a lady that I follow. She's also a friend of mine. Her name is Melanie Mack. Yes, a non-Christian plugging a Christian. Oh, dear Lord. Yeah, I, um, I share her stuff on Twitter all the time. So, okay. So, Richard, if you're not a Christian, what are you? Me to know you not to. Okay, bye-bye. All right, so if you're new to the channel, hit that big red subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, tell me I'm a jerk, come on down. Tell me I'm awesome, I don't care, okay? Please do, okay? Whichever you want to do, share with me some of your story on this, okay? I'd love to hear it, okay? Um, you can also uh, get in touch with me via my websites at vigintmed.com and viminvigorelli.com. I do have merchandise available there, I've got books, you can get this thing if you like. Also, um, there you are. Something I've been meaning to hang up. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. All right, this is my idea for the flag of Australia. Oh, yes. I'm going to hang this up eventually. I've been meaning to. I just haven't had the gumption, if you will. Mostly because I keep getting distracted by things. Yeah, negative trait. What do you do? I'm not perfect. Okay? So, I'll be back later with something else, guys. You take care. Bye-bye.